हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू क्रिएटिव मेडिसिन इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न अबाउट Androgen insensitivity syndromes. Androgen insensitivity syndrome is also called as complete androgen insensitivity. Androgen insensitivity syndrome is also called as testicular feminizing syndrome. The genotype of androgen insensitivity syndrome is forty six X Y. Here the gonads are mainly intra abdominal testes. Thus, there will be increased risk of malignancies, and the patient will present as inguinal hernia. The main hormone of androgen insensitivity syndrome is testosterone. The problem is here in androgen insensitivity syndrome, the the patient has testosterone, but the patient is insensitive to testosterone. Because the patient is insensitive to testosterone. so there will be no testosterone there will be uh, testosterone will be high but the uh, gonads are not sensitive to testosterone levels of follicle stimulating hormone is normal but levels of luteinizing hormone increases why because of because testosterone is not sensitive so the body thinks that the testosterone is not there and in order to Stimulate the Leydig cells to produce testosterone. The pituitary starts secreting luteinizing hormone. So the luteinizing hormone level starts to increase. So this is seen in so because the luteinizing hormone levels increases, so there will be activation of Sertoli cells and Leydig cells. The Sertoli cells will produce Mullerian inhibiting factor. and this mullerian inhibiting factor will cause regression of the mullerian duct thus fallopian tube uterus cervix and upper vagina are absent second leydig cells leydig cells uh, will cause testosterone will produce testosterone thus now males are resistant to testosterone if males are resistant to testosterone then wolfian duct regresses and also the testo wolfian duct regresses because the wolfian duct regresses the seminal vesicles um, ejaculatory duct epididymis vas deferens and all the male internal genitalia genital organs are absent now testosterone males are resistant to testosterone so they are also resistant to dihydrotestosterone so external genitalia will generally resembles the female so it is considered as a female child at birth at puberty the patient is resistant to testosterone there are secondary sexual characters of males do not develop testosterone increases in the adipose tissue and this testosterone in the presence of aromatase it gets converted to estrogen and estrogen is not an estrogen now this estrogen will correspond with breast development breast development occurs corresponding to tanner's four or five in females also for pubic and axillary hair the hormone needed is androgen since these children are resistant to androgens pubic hair and axillary hair do not develop properly that is the pubic hair and the axillary hair will correspond to tanner's stage 1 and stage 2 definitive diagnosis of androgen insensitivity syndrome is karyotyping in the karyotyping is actually 46 xy so with the help of karyotyping the androgen insensitivity syndrome can be diagnosed androgen insensitivity syndrome the most common androgen insensitivity syndrome is the most common cause of male pseudo hermaphroditism and it is also the most common cause of ambiguous genitalia in males management of androgen insensitivity syndrome the female the females the the patients should be continued to accept has we have to accept them as females 
counseling should be given to the patient and gonadectomy is done the gonadectomy is done especially after the breast development is complete that is at around 16 to 18 years of age estrogen replacement therapy can be done vaginoplasty vaginoplasty is the technique and the time of process is same as mullerian agenesis the female cannot become pregnant and she cannot have her own biological child thank you and thank you for watching